Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, go ahead and type a number one in the comments so we will know that you are watching. And as you are coming in, go ahead and type in the comments, God did it again. Again, it's a great day to be alive. Good morning, good morning. Come on in with a heart of worship this morning. Good morning. Type in the comments, there's nobody like you. Nobody. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Great morning, everyone. Good morning. Type in the comments, God did it again. It's a great day to be alive. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. What time is it right now where you're tuning in from? What time is it? There's none like you. Nobody. Good morning. Nobody. Just tell me. Nobody. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. Nobody. It's between you and him. Just tell me. That's awesome. 334. Say there's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you are tuning in for the first time, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We are reading through the one year Bible. We are about to wrap up year three. Y'all type a number three in the comments. Um, we have we are wrapping up year three. We are about to bring year three to a close. We are still going strong for as long as the Lord says so. Um, the Bible, uh, the publisher is Tyndale. As long as you see the green, the green leaves on the Bible, you know you have the right one. And we are reading and listening to the New Living Translation. There are many different translations. If you do not have an actual one year Bible, that is okay. You can just follow along in your regular Bible with the one year Bible reading plan. Um, all we do is come together Monday through Friday, 4.30 a.m. and read the Bible together. Y'all type in the comments, hashtag, I will read my Bible. 
Hashtag I will read my Bible. Hashtag I will read my Bible. It takes no more than 15 to 20 minutes a day. This is just a daily walk with God. We are just walking with him through the word each morning. Um, there's just no better way to start the day. If you have not already, make sure that you've grabbed your blessed oil, that you've anointed your hands. Go ahead and type in the comments. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed, oily, anointed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else thankful for this word? Just so incredibly thankful for the word of God. Um, there are many Bible reading plans out there, but this one by far is my favorite. Um, as you all know, we read a portion of the Old Testament, New Testament, a small portion of the Psalms and Proverbs. And um, it's just a way to just slowly read, you know, through the Word of God and bite-sized nuggets. And I absolutely love it. I found this Bible reading plan back in 2007 when I was just trying to figure out how to learn and read and understand a one-year Bible. And I have been faithful to this plan ever since. Like, I've tried other plans and I always come back and have been so faithful to this Bible reading plan. And I do want to say we are not in bondage to this Bible reading plan, right? It's just a guide where it's just guiding us through the word of God. So what does that mean if you've gotten off track? Um, it's okay. It's okay to begin again. If you miss a few days, it's okay to begin again. You jump right back in. Somebody say, it's okay to begin again. You just jump in where we are. You don't have to feel like I got to get caught up. I miss some days. Just open up the Bible and start with today. All right, so we're not in bondage to a Bible reading plan. So let's go ahead and begin to type at least one thing in the comments that you are thankful for. We're going to dive into the word. All right, so Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are good in every way there is to be good. And we say thank you. We thank you for being such a kind and loving father. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for protecting us through the night, Father, from things that we have no idea that you've protected us from. We thank you for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship and to spend time in your word on today, God. We say thank you. And Father, we thank you for waking us up with a heart and a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a heart and a mind to want to spend time in your word. And Father, we thank you today for a sound mind. Anybody else thankful for a sound mind? We thank you for a sound mind and for not allowing the enemy to have his way with us. We thank you, God, that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for everything. We thank you for everything. Even if you never do another thing for us, we say thank you. We are so grateful. Y'all type that in the comments. We are so grateful. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ruby, I didn't think I saw your name before. Let's see. Good morning. I'm new here. I found you Friday. Oh, so glad you're here. Y'all type in welcome. You're welcome, Ruby. And make sure that you all are thinking about your two to three people um, that you want to invite to join us. Um, and if, as a matter of fact, if you have your two to three people in mind, you can go ahead and tag them into this video. Um, quite a few of you have already done that. Um, I believe it was on Thursday and Friday. And so a few people have found us and joined us and ordered their one-year Bibles, and I'm so excited about it. Um, I have a new one-year Bible that I'll be uh, using again for this year. I love um, doing that because then I write new notes, new dates, um, just new things in my one-year Bible, and I can look back at some of the one-year Bibles and just kind of read through the notes. Anyway, so that's just kind of what I do. So I'm excited about um, us coming to the close of this new year and just beginning a new year. I am excited about it. So excited. All right. So I'm going to pull up the one year Bible on my device and we will go ahead and dive in. Listen, y'all. Let me just call early in the morning let me just calm down anybody else get excited about diving into the word anybody else get excited about diving 
into the word up early this morning. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Happy Monday, y'all. Mm -hmm. Our reading in the Old Testament today comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44. If the volume verse is okay, type a number two and let me know. Verse 12. We'll see that somebody must serve in the new temple. So God gave Ezekiel instructions concerning the Levites and priests and the manner of worship he wanted. I want you to note the emphasis on the word my, my sanctuary, my food, my covenant. My holy things, Amen. my table, so on. One reason the temple was destroyed is that the priests and Levites forgot it was the house of God. And they did in it whatever they pleased. What a privilege it is to minister for the Lord. You wonder why people would want to give their privileges to others, especially men who were not qualified. Never lose the wonder of belonging to God. And being asked to serve him. May we uh, never lose our wonder. To sin. Mm. Unfaithfulness in service can lead to loss of privileges, but faithfulness can mean being able to draw near to serve the Lord. Good the priests morning. had to be careful what they wore, what they ate and drank, and how they looked. How could they teach the people yes. to have discernment if they themselves did not practice discernment? The prince will worship only at the threshold of the gate, and the people only at the entrance. But we have the great privilege today of entering into the very presence of God, into the Holy of Holies. However, like the prince, we should not return from worship as we came. Things should be different because we have met with the Lord. Say things will and be different because I'm meeting with the Lord. <laughs> and with that... Let's begin our reading today in the Old Testament. We are meeting with the Lord right now. November 22nd. And things will be different. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 1, through chapter 45, verse 12. Then the man brought me, Ezekiel, back to the east gateway in the outer wall, but it was closed. And the Lord said to me, this gate must remain yes. closed. It will never again be opened. No man will ever pass through it. For the Lord, the God of Israel, entered here. Thus, it must always remain shut. Only the prince himself may sit inside this gateway to feast in the Lord's presence. But he may come and go only yes. through the gateway's foyer. Then the man brought me through the north gateway to the front of the temple. I looked and saw that the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord. And I fell to the ground with my face in the dust. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, take careful notice. Use your eyes and ears. Listen to everything I tell you about the regulations concerning the Lord's temple. Take careful note of who may be admitted to the temple and who is to be excluded from it. And give these rebels, the people of Israel, this message from the sovereign Lord. O people of Israel, enough of your disgusting sins. You have brought uncircumcised foreigners into my sanctuary, people who have no heart for God. In this way, you profaned my temple even as you offered me my food, the fat and blood of sacrifices. Thus, in addition to all your other disgusting sins, you have broken my covenant. You have not kept the laws I gave you concerning these sacred rituals, for you have hired foreigners to take charge of my sanctuary. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. No foreigners, including those who live among the people of Israel, will enter my sanctuary if they have not been circumcised and do not love the Lord. And the men I'll of the say, tribe of Levi, love the Lord. who abandoned me when Israel strayed away from me to worship idols, must bear the consequences of their unfaithfulness. They may still be temple guards and gate men, and they may still slaughter the animals brought for burnt offerings, and be present to help the people. But they encouraged my people to worship other gods, causing Israel to fall into deep sin. So I have raised my hand and taken an oath 
that they must bear the consequences for their sins, says the Sovereign Lord. They may not approach me to minister as priests. They may not touch any of my holy things or the holy offerings, for they must bear the shame of all the sins they have committed. They are to serve as the temple caretakers and are relegated to doing maintenance work and helping the people in a general way. However, the Levitical priests of the family of Zadok continue to minister faithfully in the temple when Israel abandoned me for idols. These men will serve as my ministers. They will stand in my presence and offer the fat and blood of the sacrifices, says the Sovereign Lord. They are the ones who will enter my sanctuary and approach my table to serve me. They are the ones who will fulfill all my requirements. When they enter the gateway to the inner courtyard, they must wear only linen clothing. They must wear no wool while on duty in the inner courtyard or in the temple itself. They must wear linen turbans and linen undergarments. They must not wear anything that would cause them to perspire. When they return to the outer courtyard where the people are, they must take off the clothes they wear while ministering to me. They must leave them in the sacred rooms and put on other clothes so they do not harm the people by transmitting holiness to them through this clothing. Mm. They must neither let their hair grow too long nor shave it off completely. Instead, they must trim it regularly. The priests must never drink wine before entering the inner courtyard. They may choose their wives only from among the virgins of Israel or the widows of the priests. They may not marry other widows or divorced women. They will teach my people the difference between what is holy and what is common, what is ceremonially clean and unclean. They will serve as judges to resolve any disagreements among my people. Their decisions must be based on my regulations, and the priests themselves must obey my <laughs> instructions and laws at all the sacred festivals, and they will see to it that the Sabbath is set apart as a holy day. A priest must never defile himself by being in the presence of a dead person, unless it is his father, mother, child, brother, or unmarried sister. In such cases, it is permitted. But such a priest can only return to his temple duties after being ritually cleansed and then waiting for seven days. The first day he returns to work and enters the inner courtyard and the sanctuary. He must offer a sin offering for himself, says the Sovereign Lord. As to property, the priests will not have any, for I alone am their inheritance. Their food will come from the gifts and sacrifices brought to the temple by the people, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offerings. Whatever mm -hmm. anyone sets apart for the Lord will belong to the priests. The first of the ripe fruits and all the gifts brought to the Lord will go to the priests. The first samples of each grain harvest and the first of your flour must also be given to the priests, so the Lord will bless your homes. The priests may never eat meat from any bird or animal that dies a natural death or that dies after being attacked by another animal. When you divide the land among the tribes of Israel, you must set aside a section of it for the Lord as his holy portion. This piece of land will be eight and a third miles long and six and two thirds miles wide. The entire area will be holy ground. A section of this land, measuring 875 feet by 875 feet, will be set aside for the temple. An additional strip of land, 87 and a half feet wide, is to be left empty all around it. Within the larger sacred area, measure out a portion of land eight and a third miles long and three and a third miles wide. Within it, the sanctuary of the most holy place will be located. This area will be a holy land set aside for the priests who minister to the Lord in the sanctuary. They will use it for their homes, and my temple will be located within it. The strip of sacred land next to it, also eight and a third miles long and three and a third miles wide, will be a living area for the Levites who work at the temple. It will be their possession and a place for their towns. A 
adjacent to the larger sacred area will be a section of land eight and a third miles long and one and two third miles wide. This will be set aside to be a city where anyone in Israel can come and live. Two special sections of land will be set apart for the prince. One section will share a border with the east side of the sacred lands and city, and the second section will share a border on the west side. Then the far eastern and western borders of the prince's lands will line up with the eastern and western boundaries of the tribal areas. These sections of land will be the prince's allotment. My princes will no longer oppress and rob my people. They will assign the rest of the land to the people, giving an allotment to each tribe. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. Enough, you princes of Israel. Stop all your violence and oppression and do what is just and right. Quit robbing and cheating my people out of their land. Type in hashtag Stop enough. expelling them from their homes. You must use only honest weights and scales, honest dry volume measures, and honest liquid volume measures. The homer will be your standard unit for measuring volume. The ephah and the bath will each measure one-tenth of a homer. The standard unit for weight will be the silver shekel. One shekel consists of 20 giras, and 60 shekels are equal to one mina. Enough. <laughs> November 22nd. Today, as we look into the New Testament, we begin reading in a new book. A new book. First Peter. The Apostle Peter was chosen to be the first to take the gospel to the Gentiles, but his ministry was primarily to the Jews. He wrote these two letters, First and Second Peter, to believers scattered in five areas of the Roman Empire two of which Paul had not been allowed to enter. And in writing these letters, Peter fulfilled the commission given him in Luke uh, chapter 22 and in John chapter 21. The theme of the first letter is the grace of God. And Peter tells us how to live as aliens in a hostile world. The theme of the second letter is spiritual knowledge. He uses the word knowledge seven times in the letter. And he warns us about false teachers. Peter opens his first epistle by reminding his readers of what God's grace has done for them in saving them. And he then points out that God's grace helps them in various relationships of life and in the coming time of persecution. Peter sums up the themes of both letters in his benediction over in 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace, he writes, and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is the only way to succeed in these last days. We begin, of course, today in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, and we'll read about the fact that salvation is a calling. We are chosen by the Father, who gives us the new birth. Good morning. We are set apart by the Spirit, who gave the word and enables God's servants to That's declare it. I have been chosen and by the Father. The faith to believe the promise. We have been purchased by the blood of God's Son, who died for us, rose again, and is coming for us to give us our inheritance. No wonder Peter opened his letter with a song of praise. So, let's get to it, as we begin today our reading in the New Testament. Good morning. Good morning. November 22nd, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. This letter is from Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the lands of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and the province of Asia, and Bithynia. Good morning. God the Father chose you long ago, and the Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Jesus Christ and are cleansed by his blood. May you have more and more of God's special favor and wonderful peace. All honor to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is by his boundless mercy that God has given us the privilege of being born again. Now we live with a wonderful expectation because Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. For God has reserved a priceless inheritance for his children. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. 
and God, in his mighty power, will protect you until you receive the salvation. Because you that? are trusting him. It will be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though it is necessary for you to endure many trials. For it a is while. necessary. These trials are only to test your faith, to show that it is strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So if your faith remains strong after being tried by fiery trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So my, t my faith will remain him, strong. You have never seen him. Though you do not see him, you trust him, and even now, you are happy with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Your reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This salvation was something the prophets wanted to know more about. They prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. Even though they had many questions as to what it all could mean, they wondered what the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. They wondered when and to whom all this would happen. They were told that these things would not happen during their lifetime, but many years later during yours. And now this good news has been announced by those who preached to you in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Yeah. Psalm 119. That was encouraging. Verses 17 through 32. God's word will guide you on the pilgrim path of life. You're a stranger on the earth, and you need a road map to help you know the way. That road map is the Bible. Ask God to open your eyes to the word, and keep your eyes on the way. Say, Let open your my Bible eyes to the be word. Be your trusted counselor. The Word of God brings you the blessing of life because it has life and it imparts life and it nourishes life, the Word of God. See, God's Word can revive and strengthen you. These are not just words on a page. This is where you meet God. These words are living and true. And uh, God's Word will revive you and strengthen you, as I said, even when you're in the dust. Nine times in this psalm, the writer prayed for the new life from the Lord. Hey, no need to stay in the dust when there is life for you in the Word of God. Psalm 119, verses 17 through 32. Be good to your servant, that I may live and obey your word. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your law. I am but a foreigner here on earth. I need the guidance of your commands. Don't hide them from me. I am overwhelmed continually with a desire for your laws. You rebuke those cursed proud ones who wander from your commands. Don't let them scorn and insult me, for I have obeyed your decrees. Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your principles. Your decrees please me. They give me wise advice. I type in wise in advice. Dust, completely discouraged. Revive me by your word. I told you my plans and you answered. Now teach me your principles. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments. And I will meditate on your wonderful miracles. I weep with grief. Encourage me by your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your law. I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your laws. I cling to your decrees. Lord, don't let me be put to shame. If you will help me, I will run to follow your commands. Say, if you will help me, Lord, I will run to follow your commands. Verses 8 through 10. A person who makes money by charging interest will lose it. It will end up in the hands of someone who is kind to the poor. The prayers of a person who ignores the law 
are despised. Those who lead the upright into sin will fall into their own trap, but the honest will inherit good things. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, let everybody say, y'all type in the comments and say, amen. This was so good. I think I say this every single day, but this was so good. Uh, first Peter, the reading in First Peter was so encouraging. If you have a verse that um, stood out to you, go ahead and begin to type it in the comments, type your takeaway, um, you know, what the Lord spoke to you through the reading today. So remember, as we are reading and listening, just like Tom Dooley said, right, the word is life. These are not just words on a paper. We have literally met with God, right? And I need you all to say, things will be different because I have met with the Lord Things will be different because I have met with God. And so as we open up this word and uh, read it, we need to believe that because we have met with God, that things will be different. Um, so in Ezekiel uh, verse 4, um, it says, I looked and saw that the glory of the Lord filled the temple of that of the Lord, and I fell face down on the ground. Um, so my question today is, um, we read that Ezekiel was overwhelmed by the glory of the Lord. He was overwhelmed by the presence of God. So the question for you today is, when was the last time you were overwhelmed by God's glory? When was the last time that I was overwhelmed by God's glory? And then I want you to write down what caused it. Um, and so for those of you that may be new here, I need to slow down. I feel like I'm talking so fast when I get excited. For those of you that are new here, we want to make sure that after we read the word, right, we are in our time right now of morning devotion. After we read the word, after this broadcast, you want to go into your time of personal devotion where it's just you and the Lord. It's great for us to come together and to fellowship and to spend time in his word, but you want to go into a time of personal devotion and so what i've shared for the past three years um is a journaling method and if you have one that works for you by all means continue to use that but it's the soap journaling method y'all type in soap capital s o a p soap and so s is for scripture you want to find a scripture that stood out to you one that you want to dig into a little bit deeper o is for observation what is god saying to you through this scripture what is he saying to you and then a is for application what out of this scripture that you just meditated on what can you apply is there um, an instruction is it a word of encouragement is it a word of encouragement something you need to stop doing something you need to start doing so a is for application and how or how does this scripture apply to me now and p is for prayer you could either pray that um, scripture a passage of scripture or verse back to the Lord you can um, pray and ask the Lord to help you to apply it you know whatever that it is that you need to correct and stop doing whatever you, it is that you need to start doing so S is for scripture O is for observation A is for application and P is for prayer and so I think it was um, towards the end of 2019 uh, or early 2020 that I shared that with you all. So you want to make sure you're going in your time of mourning, of personal devotion. And again, um, this is us fellowshipping and spending time with the with the Lord. It's not something that we're marking off our to-do list, right? Saying, I read my Bible today for 15 minutes. No, that is not what we want to do. We are reading the word for transformation, right? Not just for information. And so um, I'm just excited because I know what spending time in this word has done for me. When I tell you this word is life, it is life. This word is life giving. I remember, listen, the word saved my life. And that's why I'm so passionate, you know, and especially about this Bible reading plan. Um, anyway, we're not going to go down that rabbit trail, but we want to make sure that that's what we're doing. So verse four in Ezekiel, the question you can ask, listen, I've given you questions and you can use them or not. Okay. So when was the last time I was overwhelmed by God's glory and what caused it? So you can spend some time, um, and think about that. And then, uh, 
first peter y'all first peter blessed me first peter blessed me but first i want to read this to you because this is for all of you that are on here may god give you right veronica may god give you natasha more and more grace and peace and special favor that blessed me reading that and that was verse two may god give you more and more grace and peace and special favor may god give you more and more grace and peace and special favor oh, so y'all this blessed me um i'll start at verse uh the end of verse three now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Y'all type in, so be truly glad. It says, so be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead even though you have to endure many trials for a little while somebody type in the comments it won't last forever it will only last for a little while so be truly glad these trials will show you that your faith is genuine it is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold through you, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong, y'all type in the comments, that's the declaration for today. I decree and declare that my faith will remain strong <clears throat> through many trials. It will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Somebody say, what I'm going through right now, it is necessary what i'm going through right now it is necessary somebody type in the comments it's necessary it's only a season it won't last forever only for a little while and type in the comments i declare that my faith will remain strong it won't last forever i decree and declare that my faith will remain strong that blessed me and i was encouraged all over again y'all type in the comments it's necessary it's necessary it is necessary so i will be truly glad <laughs> that was a whole word so i think that's it that's it for me today and i'm just going to kind of um reread psalm um out loud again uh, because again, God's word is life, right? It will revive us. It will strengthen us. It will give us wise advice. So my prayer for each and every one of us is that God will continue to open our eyes to his word, right? And what did David say? Revive me by your word. Teach me your decrees. Help me understand. Encourage me by your word, right? And so I'm just going to reread and read that again and spend some time there. Um, so again, as we close no 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 i wrote down some things um i wrote down a few verses i wrote down a few verses that i want to share what time is it 509 um y'all write someone type in the comments psalm 130 verse 5 psalm 130 verse 5 says i wait for the lord i expectantly wait and in his word do i hope and in his word do I hope. And so again, I was encouraged. It was um, 1 Peter 1, 3. All praise to God the Father, to our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Christ Jesus from, his, from the dead. Part B, now we live with great expectation. With great expectation. And so my question is... Um, Another question, what are you placing your hope in? What are you placing your hope in? So this is a question for you during your time of personal devotion. What are you putting your hope in? What are you putting your hope in? What are you putting your hope in? And so for me, I wrote, um, sometimes we hope that those that, lo that we love will always be there, right? We put our hope in our doctors to keep us healthy. 
We put our hope in our government at times um, that they would make good decisions and keep us safe. You know, so those are just some examples. What or who are you putting your hope in? And we need to remember that people are flawed. They will disappoint us, right? People are flawed. They will disappoint us. I am flawed. I will disappoint me. People are flawed. They will always disappoint us. So who or what are you putting your hope in? And then um, another verse this led me to was Psalm 118.8. Y'all type in Psalm 118.8. It says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Who or what are you putting your hope and trust in? And us... um. Yeah, and Romans, and also read Romans, Romans 5, 5, Romans 5, 5. All right, so these were just a few things that I wrote down. And all the rest of this, this is for me. All right, so anyway, I'm going to continue. I started before the broadcast, but I will continue my time. Remember, y'all type in the comments, personal devotion. We don't want to just check off and say, I read my Bible today. This is not something that we just put on our to-do list and check off, close our Bibles and not open them up anymore, right? So make sure that you spend time if you haven't already in personal devotion. So, um, and then another declaration I wrote down, I believe this was from um, something that Tom Dooley said. Who's Tom Dooley? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Um, he's the, that's the name of the person that does the commentary before he does the reading. Um, and I put, I wrote, I declare that my, that the Bible is my trusted counselor. I declare that the Bible is my trusted counselor. And that came from one of these verses in Psalm 119. But I declare, um, that the Bible is my trusted counselor, right? That gives me wise advice. Verse 24, your laws please me and they give me wise advice. I declare that the Bible, this word of God, is my trusted counselor that will give me wise advice every time, right? <laughs> so that's it, y'all. <laughs> I'm getting on track with personal devotion. Good, 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 good. All right, so I'm about to hop off and um, get ready, right, to move my body and to, to go into my time of personal devotion. And if you are in the mentorship group, of course, as always, you are invited to join me. And that's part of our morning routine. We move our bodies, spend a time in our own personal devotion um, as we are just listening to worship music and just kind of preparing ourselves for the day just such a great way to start the day class is at eight o'clock a.m in the group and remember if you can't be on at eight o'clock um the live the, the the replay will be there and so yeah so what do we do we are just y'all type in the comments pursuing wellness of mind body and spirit according to god's word we are pursuing wellness of mind body and spirit according to God's word and so I'm just excited about what he's doing just excited about uh okay we're reading these I thought I turned off my messages but I didn't so y'all have a great day um happy Monday um I will not be live on Thursday or Friday so we have a short week this week I may be able to pop up on Friday but I definitely won't be live on Thursday um so we'll be here for sure Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 4.30. Uh, yes, pursuing wellness of mind, wellness of body, wellness of spirit. Oh, what was the book I was looking at? It was this little booklet that I found. I think I found this. I, I, I found this in 2009. It should still be in print. I don't know. It's old. Um, it's a little booklet, Know, know Your Bible. I don't even see um, who is the author. I don't know. Just take a screenshot of it. <laughs> and so 
um, in 2007, I found the one year Bible and then, um, you know, and, um, and in the one year Bible, it doesn't say what each book is about at the beginning of the new book. So that was when I found this little booklet in 2008 and I still reference it. And so we began a new book, first Peter. And, um, so for first Peter, it tells you who the author is, what the date is, what the book is about in 10 words or less. So in 10 words or less, it says first Peter is about suffering for the sake of Jesus is noble and good. Um, it gives you details on the book, um, the most quoted verse from this book and just little details. So yeah, I, anyway, yeah, I think, yeah, a lot of people have this. It's very old. <laughs> I don't know if it's still in print or not. I don't know, but that's what that was. <laughs> All right, so it's 516. I did great, great on time this morning. Great on time this morning. Um, so I don't know what our, I don't know what our topic is going to be this morning. Um, I think, anyway, everyone have a better, yes, is it on Amazon still? Good, let's see. Um, I, I know I only paid like no more than like three or four dollars for it. Super cheap. Let's see. Know your Bible. Let's see how much it is now. Yep, two dollars and nineteen cents. Super cheap. Two dollars and nineteen cents. I knew I just paid a few dollars for it, so it's still in print. It's still there. Um, all sixty-six Bibles explained, and I lo I I, actually, I love it. It's, I like having this at my fingertips. Is it Paul Kent, the author? Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> oh, y'all are awesome. Yes, it's two dollars and nineteen cents on Amazon. Let me see something. Yes. And it's on Kindle for 99 cents. All right, you all have a wonderful day. I love you all. Our Okay, so yes, our declaration was I decree and declare my faith will remain strong. And then I wrote down a couple of other declarations, but we'll share that one on our pages. I decree and declare that my faith will remain strong. And I think that's it. So I'll let you all know we will not be live on Thursday. Um, and I think that's it. So, yes, it's on Kindle for 99 cents. I don't have a Kindle anymore. Do they? I didn't. Yeah, I don't. I think I have the app on my phone. Um... And they have some in print used for 94 cents. I love Amazon. I buy all of, listen, I buy a lot of stuff off of Amazon. All right, so let's see what y'all saying. I think we're done here. I'm going to go change. And if you're in the mentorship group, I'll be hopping on into our room in just a moment. And I'll see y'all in a little bit. I did great on time today. <laughs> I did great on, I didn't take any of my vitamins, did I? I did not. I did not take, I didn't do any of my stuff today. I was so excited about the word this morning. First Peter. <laughs> I love y'all. Have a great day. You too, Dion. I'll see you tomorrow and Wednesday. We'll be here tomorrow and Wednesday. Alicia, you raised your hand. Are you moving with us this morning? Is that what that means? Let's see. You, uh, oh, you were saying bye. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye, y'all.